The ancestral Pueblo people lived here from approximately 1150 CE to 1550 CE. They built homes carved from the volcanic tuff and planted crops in the mesa top fields. By 1550, the ancestral Pueblo people had moved from this area to Pueblos along the Rio Grande. Today, we are going to visit those homes. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a minute of Colorado Martini. So we just made it into Bandelier um, National Monument. Uh, we're going to go see if we can see some of the ancient uh, Native American ruins. Um, but we just made it in. They're only letting a certain amount of people in um, during um, the epidemic at the moment. Um, and so be warned, you might be turned away. It's one of those crap shoots that you just have to come and see. Um, but we were like some of the last people that they let in. So make sure that if you are coming here during um, the epidemic that you come early in the morning so you're some of the first people into the park. Um, it's 1230 right now and so they're almost to capacity. So we found that at the Valles uh, Caldera and we're finding that at Bandolier. So. It is Memorial Day weekend. It is Memorial Day, I mean Labor Day weekend. Yeah, that um, one too. And there's some bizarre stuff you see on the road because of Los Alamos. So we couldn't take pictures of it, of course, but it was, there's some strange stuff that you see. <laughs> kind of Area 51 type stuff. So um, anyways, it's just kind of bizarre. So we're at the lookout, the first lookout that looks down um, at Frijoles uh, Canyon, um, where the Native Americans used to build their structures. So let's go take a look. Bandelier National Monument is a 33,000 acre United States National Monument near the town of Los Alamos in New Mexico. The monument preserves the homes and territory of the ancestral Pueblo people. And as you descend down into the valley, more and more cave dwellings become apparent. When you look around, the rock looks a little different to you. It kind of has a little bit of a pink tinge. Well, that is tough. What is tough? It's compacted volcanic ash. Two massive volcanic eruptions more than a million years ago covered this area hundreds of feet deep with flows of tuff. The tuff was over a thousand feet deep in some places and airborne ash from the eruption is found as far as Iowa, Nebraska, and Texas. Over thousands of years, streams cut deep canyons into the tuff plateau, creating the canyon and mesa terrain you see today. The wind, rain, and frost then eroded holes into the tough surface. The native people were attracted to the year-round water supply and sheltered location of Frijoles Canyon. Ancestral Pueblo people settled here. They shaped the soft, workable tuff into 
building blocks for masonry homes and carved cave rooms into the cliff. So we're walking up to the ruins and the main ruins um, I was only about a fourth mile up and a fourth mile back and then the rest of the ruins are about a half a mile walk and a half a mile back and it's a loop. Um, so make sure you bring water, it is warm out here. Um, one of the reasons the Native Americans left the area is because of drought and um, so it's a very dry, high altitude area so bring plenty and plenty of water. Native people have lived in this area from the Ice Age hunters 10,000 years ago to the first Pueblo dwellers who arrived on the scene nearly 800 years ago. As you reach the floor of the canyon, you will have the opportunity to explore villages and cliff dwellings. So they used to cook in here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So they used to dig out on the side here in these bigger holes. You can see this white tuff right here. And that's, you know, the tailings of them digging the holes basically. So these big areas right here. So when you look up there with my telephoto, you can actually see their structure to the back wall, like plaster, and then there's a door that's back in there. So it's pretty cool. So when you just come out of the visitor center, you're gonna look up and every walk around, keep going, you know, walking straight because every time you walk, you see more of these. There's some here and you can see they have doors. I mean, actual carved out doors. There's one right there between the trees. Um, they're all over. So every time I kind of walk forward a little bit, I see more because they were, they were blocked by the trees. But they're very cool. What's really cool, it's like a castle. Like this is like the top of the castle. So you can hike up to the side here and there's a ladder. People are climbing in to actually one of the habitats. Um, they're going actually inside. We're not gonna be climbing up there today. It's very hot out. We don't have enough water with us. So we're watching from a distance. Do note that dogs or pets of any kind are not allowed in buildings or on the trails in Bandelaire. They are allowed in the parking area and the campgrounds. This is a very hot environment, so leaving your dog in the car is really not an option. So you can climb up there. Beautiful ruins everywhere. So once you go past these ruins right here, you can take this path that zigzags up to the fortress 
and this is where the ladders are that you can uh, go on. You can see there's more, there's several staircases you go up. So there's a point, it, it's concrete all the way up to this point, and then there's stairs. Um, so you can get a wheelchair up to a certain point, but it's all through the side here. So you can see why the natives, Americans left, you know, they're bone dry. There are a couple of campgrounds within the park. Juniper Family Campground is best for RVs and is located near the entrance of the park just off Highway 4. Each campsite has a picnic table and a grill. There is no electrical hookups or showers available. Most sites are appropriate for tent, RV, or trailer camping. Several sites can accommodate vehicles as long as 40 feet. A dump station is located on the road to the campground, but is closed during the winter months. So make sure that you stop at the Bandelier um, Frijoles Canyon um, Outlook. It's definitely worth a stop. Pull out before you walk down the trail. Make sure you pull out your uh, telephoto lens um, because you can see some of the structures from um, up here. Also make sure you bring plenty, plenty of water for you, with you. you not only you in, are you in altitude, but you're, um, it's warm out here. And we're here in September and it's very hot. Um, I've got five water bottles filled up and we're like down to our last two. So uh, make sure you bring plenty of water when you come visit this area. So, Bandelaire National Park, yes, it's a must. It is absolutely fantastic. Make sure to check out all our videos on traveling in New Mexico. It is truly an enchanted place.